Hey everyone, and welcome to my channel. I am Miss Who, your physics teacher. In this video, I am going to go through one of the fundamental lessons of physics, which will cover the concept of physical quantities. In this lesson, we are going to learn about physical quantities as well as base and derived quantities. Now, without further ado, let's get right to it. First of all, what is a physical quantity? So one thing you have to remember that in physics, a lot of the terms are borrowed from English. So they sound like English, you pronounce them like English, they even read like an English word. But if you don't know physics and you only know, you know English in terms of the words, you might find, uh, I have no idea what this word means. So that's the thing when it comes to science. In science, we have a lot of jargon. So jargon here means technical words. So there are certain terms which are taken from the English language, but they have very specific meanings when it comes to that specific science. So for example, in physics, the term physical quantity here refers to a characteristic or property of an object that can be measured or calculated from other measurements. Very often, you will find that the term physical quantity is also known by the short term quantity. So if you are doing questions, you might find sometimes a question asks for the physical quantity or just asks for the quantity. In this case, physical quantity and quantity mean the same thing. Now, bear in mind that this is different from the concept of units. A unit is quite simply a standard for expressing and comparing the measurement of physical quantities. So if this is all new to you, I'm sure you're looking at these definitions and you're wondering, OK, I don't know what that means. This has explained nothing to me. So to understand this further, let's take a look at a simple example. So over here, we have a picture of a measuring instrument. And I'm sure you recognize this instrument, right? Yeah, it's a ruler. So what does a ruler measure? The ruler measures length. So in this case, the physical quantity that's being measured by the ruler here is length. So if you recall what a physical quantity is, it's a characteristic or a property of an object that can be measured. So in this case, the ruler is measuring length. Therefore, the physical quantity it's measuring is length. In this case, if you were to take a value of measurement of length, you need to be able to express it with its value. And these values are always expressed in units. So if you look at length, there are different units which can be used. Some rulers express the value in meters, some in centimeters, some in inches, or you might have a ruler with a completely different unit. So the unit is a way of expressing the value of the length being measured. So for example, if you were to take a ruler and you measure the length of a pencil, you might get something like 16.5 centimeters. Centimeters is the unit. So the thing is, when we look at length, there are many units which we can express the value in. So we need to have a standard unit. This is where you need to learn about SI units. So the term SI here refers to the international system of units. And internationally, it's abbreviated to SI, which comes from the French term système international. I'm probably saying that wrong. You probably know better French than me. But well, we just need to know SI unit. So for example, for the ruler that measures length, we could express the value of the length in meter, centimeter, or inches. So when it comes to expressing the measurement, we must have a standard unit which is recognized internationally so that it's easy for us to compare our values and also to do calculations. So for length, the SI unit is meters. And of course, you can express the length in other units, for example, in centimeters or inches. For physics, we would always prefer to express the value in SI units. So most of the time, we will be expressing length with the SI unit of meters. 
So now let's look at physical quantities in general. By now, I'm sure you have a better idea of what physical quantities are. Physical quantities refer to the terms that are used to express what we are measuring. Now, there are thousands and thousands of physical quantities, some of which I'm sure you and I will never hear in our own lifetime. And that's because different industries have their own physical quantities which need to be measured. Having said that though, in general, you can think of physical quantities being classified into two general classifications, base quantities and derived quantities. And in this lesson, we will focus only on these two classifications. There are of course many other different classifications, but for this lesson, we will only focus on these two classifications. Let's start first with base quantities. So base quantities are physical quantities which cannot be derived from any other physical quantity. If you look at the term, base already means the fundamental, right? So base quantities are quite simply fundamental quantities. They cannot be derived. So to derive here means to go through a process to create something brand new. Mathematically, derived normally means multiplication or division. So base quantities are quite simply the most fundamental, most basic quantities of all physical quantities that exist in this world. Of all the thousands and thousands of physical quantities that exist in this world, there are only seven base quantities. Do you need to remember this list? If you're a physics student, then yes, you do. These are the seven base quantities and their corresponding SI units. There is length, which is measured with the SI unit of meters, time in seconds, mass, kilogram, electric current in ampere, temperature in Kelvin, amount of substance in mole, and luminous intensity in candela. Now, generally in physics, we only focus on five base quantities, which are the first five in this list. It's not to say that the other two are not important. It's just that they rarely come out in the physics topics that we will learn. So that is why you might find that in some textbooks or in some physics literature, they only talk about five base quantities, which are length, time, mass, electric current, and temperature. However, as physics students, you should know that in the world, there are actually seven base quantities. Derived quantities, on the other hand, are physical quantities which are derived from other physical quantities through multiplication or division, or even a combination of multiplication and division. So by now we know there are thousands and thousands of physical quantities that exist in this world. If there are only seven base quantities, that means all other physical quantities are derived quantities. So the difference here between base and derived quantities is that base quantities are the basic of the basic. Derived quantities can be derived from other base quantities or even other derived quantities. Let's go through a few examples here to give you a better idea of what we mean in this case. So for example, if we look at area, now area is a physical quantity because it is measurable. If we were to take the area of a rectangle, we can actually calculate this value out by multiplying the length and the width of the rectangle, which gives us the area. So if you look at a mathematical process, the length times width will give us a new physical quantity, which is the area. That means the area is a derived quantity. Now, I'm sure you're also looking, okay, but it says length and width. One thing that you do need to remember is that sometimes in physics, we may use different words to represent different measurements, but they're actually pretty much the same thing. Width is quite simply a type of length. It's just a different term used to represent a different part of the rectangle. But when you get down to it, width is just length measured at a different dimension. So sometimes we might write width as length instead. So the area of a rectangle can be written this case, length times length. And from a physics point of view, these are actually the same. So another way of writing this is just to write length squared. 
Now, because length is measured with the SI unit of meters, the SI unit of area is meter times meter, which gives us meter squared. Let's look at another example. In this case, volume. So for example, the volume of a cube. So in this case, the volume of a cube can be calculated by multiplying the length with the width and the height. Just as before, width and height are quite simply different terms that are actually the same thing as length, just measuring different parts of the cube. So in this case, we can write it as length times length times length. Or to simplify it, length cube. And that's why the unit of volume is meter cube because it's meter times meter times meter, length times length times length. Therefore, the SI unit of volume is meter cube. Now, so far, we've only looked at examples involving multiplication. There are also derived quantities obtained through division. For example, speed. So speed is calculated by taking distance divided by time. The unit of speed is, of course, derived from this formula. In this case, distance is meters and time is second. And that's why the SI unit of speed is meters per second. Are there also examples involving a combination of multiplication and division? Yes, of course. So what we've seen so far is the multiplication and division of base quantities. So if we were to take a look at this example, Density can be calculated by taking mass divided by volume. So mass is a base quantity, while volume is a derived quantity. We've just seen how volume can be calculated. We can expand this formula to just base quantities by turning volume into length times width times height. And this is how we obtain the unit for density, because the unit of mass is kilogram, while volume, which is length times width times height, gives us meter cube. The SI unit for density is kilogram per meter cube. Now, sometimes you can also get derived quantities where the SI unit is not a representation of any of the base units. For example, force. So force can be calculated by taking mass times acceleration. If you haven't learned acceleration, please watch my video on motion, which involves velocity as well as acceleration. So just to open up acceleration to include base quantities, we have mass times length divided by time squared. So mass is kilogram, length is meters, and times is second squared. And that's how you get kilogram meters per second squared. However, it is very awkward to always express the value of force in kilogram meters per second squared, or if you want to say kgm slash s squared. That's kind of a mouthful. The physicist who discovered the concept of force, of course, came up with a unit named after himself. And in this case, the SI unit of force is Newton, which is expressed in the short form of n. And that's physical quantities in a nutshell, covering the concepts of base and derived quantities. I hope you have found this lesson to be educational and helpful. Do subscribe for more lessons, solutions, and exam strategies by your teacher, Ms. Ho. And of course, if you'd like to get more information on SPM and IGCSE physics, do check out my website at physicsrocks.com. Happy studying!